Hi guys, and welcome back. You're in the greenhouse with me today, which if, if all goes according to plan, you will have seen me clean out the greenhouse um, last week. This week it is also unseasonably warm. So I am gonna take advantage and start to plant some of my seeds, start, start some of my seeds. But we're gonna start some seeds using what's called a winter sowing method. We are zone 6B. So we're about 10 weeks out from our average first frost, 12 if you're being conservative. So it's time, it's time to start some stuff. I'm probably actually a little bit later than I would like to be, but it's okay, it's okay, because they'll grow regardless. So I am going to winter sow some seeds that's why i've got all these guys sitting here and i will talk about that method in a little bit and then i'm also going to start some seed trays with some some little babies in them i'm going to grab my seed packets and tell you what we're doing and coffee seed packets and coffee very important all right Here's what we got. I'm going to actually bring you guys over here. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt myself. David got a drone and he is zipping around here and it sounds like a giant bumblebee and it keeps on creeping me out, um, but it's cool. All right, guys, these are the seeds that I'm going to start using winter sowing. Now winter sowing in a nutshell, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing here in a moment, but winter sowing in a nutshell takes bottles, clear bottles, either milk bottles, or in my case, vinegar bottles or soda bottles, and put soil in them, you put the seeds in and you stick them outside. So winter sowing is very well suited for seeds that need what's called stratification, for seeds that need a cold period in order to properly germinate which in my case are lots of perennials. Now, many of these I have started successfully winter sowing. Some I have not yet. So it's going to be a grand experiment. I have you guys sort of up there <laughs> on my greenhouse because I couldn't figure out the best camera angle. So I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see all the things as I walk through what I am doing. So I'm going to go over these seeds as I plant them. So I'm going to set them aside. I'm going to kind of batch process this winter sowing thing. So I am going to prep all these containers. All right, let me walk you through this real quick now that I've done one using a sharp knife, your plastic. You don't need the tops. We're gonna cut, I do it about halfway up and I cut around and I leave a little bit at the handle to act as a hinge for when I wanna put the lid back on. Boy, I like so. And it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be neat. That had some water in it. And then, and this part's actually always <laughs> easier to do it before I cut, but I always cut before I remember to put some drainage holes in. You don't want this filling with water. All right. And then set that aside. I'm going to do all these real quick, obviously, in case you couldn't tell by my vast array of different sizes. The only requirement for plastic bottles for this little project is that they be clear or semi-clear. So obviously this totally clear will work fine. This is a little more opaque. It'll work fine too. Throw the lids away.
those scissors work better. container. I might have to go dig around and see what else I have that I could start. Um, I've got tool seeds I want to start and no I've got <laughs> I've got 11 seeds I want to start and 12 containers. It's almost like I planned. Now that we've got this cut, holes, holes poked, this open, we're gonna fill all these with with soil. I've I've seen lots of different versions of what soil to use. Um, I myself have used a couple different kinds. This year I am using the same medium that I used to start my seeds, which is actually oh, 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 a soilless blend. So this is what I am using. It is lovely stuff. It is um, from a local company here. They call it Hydra because it is very good at controlling moisture for seeds specifically. So I'm going to put my starting mix in there. I do know, I can tell you, in years past I have absolutely just used potting soil. Any old potting soil. Um, and again, some of you who have done this successfully might be going, no, no, that didn't work for me. And maybe it didn't. Maybe some of my failures were because of the soil, but Nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> Let me fill all of these with my seed starting mix. I can tell you right now, I'm gonna have to soak these well when I get them outside. They are, um, this mix has been in the greenhouse all winter, so it is dry. <laughs> I forgot the camera was so close. Coffee. Now, let me tell you guys what I'm going to sew in each of these and I'll stick them in. <laughs> I hear the drone. <laughs> yes, see that? Ideally. I should have gotten the seed starting mix wet before I started all of this, but hindsight is 2020. Right, right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go get my watering can. I'm gonna wet these down before I seed them. Stay tuned. All right. The other tools for this project that you are gonna need aside from these plastic containers and either potting mix or soil starting mix is, for me, I use duct tape and some sort of marker. Now typically, I will tell you, I've used Sharpies before, and Sharpies are not the permanent markers that they claim to be. Ideally, you're gonna wanna use something that is UV and weather resistant. Some sort of garden marker works the best because it will absolutely fade, and Sharpies, in fact, tend to go away completely, however, I did pick these up, so I'm going to try them. They are Sharpie Pro. So we're going to see. This will not be the first time that I have said, oh, let me try something and then regretted it. But it's what we're going to try because it's what I have. The tape is both for labeling and for taping these things shut. The first seed that I'm going to plant is Joe pie weed. I've not grown this yet. I'm very excited. I will, if my editing skills are on point, I will put a picture up of what this is. This is a native plant around here in Virginia and it grows super, super tall, like 
five foot tall. That's the height of a human being. And it gets these beautiful umbrella-like flowers that are it's just beautiful. And of course, all the pollinators love it. It is also, I have discovered, lovely in arrangements. So it is a perennial. This is, I hope that's not obnoxious me opening that up. This I am planning on putting down in our, what I'm going to be calling our prairie garden. Um, I will probably find some spaces for it as well around the rest of the garden, but I definitely want it down there in the prairie garden. It will be tall. It will be statuesque. It will be eaten by bugs, very likely, and it's going to be in an area that that's okay. All right, so here's my deal. I'm actually going to use this big one. And on the seed packet, this one is actually one of those that requires stratification, which means it is a good candidate for winter sowing because it will naturally be outside getting frozen, getting warmed up, getting frozen, getting warmed up. That's what very often triggers these perennial seeds to germinate. I am not going to start all my seeds in here though. I'm not going to put all my eggs in this basket, shall we say. I am going to sprinkle about, this is about 20 seeds, which might be more than I need. And the rest of these I will put back and I will actually start to, um, I will start them traditionally as well to make sure I've got plenty. All right, let me label. There's that. I've seen quite a few people who seal these up completely and I think that'd be fine um, to really get the greenhouse effect. But I'll be honest, I haven't really noticed a difference. So but there's that. Okay, Joe Pie Weed, done. Ladies Mental. This is another new one. I've got quite a few new ones I'm trying this year. Oh, we're going to see. Again, I will pop up a picture. Alcamilla Mullis. For those of you who like to say Latin. <laughs> These are so pretty. So pretty. I've wanted them in my garden for a while. I look at them in the garden center and I'm like, oh, let me buy one or two. Um, but I just can't quite make myself do it. And then seeds, on the other hand. I can start myself some seeds. All of these, so I'm not going to keep on repeating myself, all of these I'm going to set some aside for starting traditionally as well. I like to hedge my bets. Again, I'm going to do, I don't know, that was probably 12 seeds. I'm going to sprinkle them on the top. These also, according to the seed packet directions, um, could benefit from stratification. So again, I feel like they're going to be a good fit for winter sowing. These are perennial in my area. There's that. I'm going to label this, stick it on the outside, and then tape it shut. Next, a lot of these are new to me this year. Korean feather grass. Feather reed grass. I love grasses. And as the season starts in earnest and I'm able to show you guys some of the things I've got growing in my garden, grasses have become one of my favorite because their movement through summer and fall are just the best, especially in the fall. And frankly, I think some of them are stunning in dried arrangements and dried wreaths. So, um, Korean feather reed grass. Here's my little PSA on grasses in my area, especially, of course, this is very, very specific to your area, but in my area, there are quite a few ornamental grasses that are invasive. They are gnarly. They are thugs. Keep an eye out for them. Miscanthus being the one that pops into my head, um, a very popular ornamental grass, but many varieties are thugs. So I tried to be sure. I did my homework and I did not get a variety of grass that was going to be a thug, that was going to be invasive. There are absolutely 
grasses that will self-seed and take over the world if you let them. This guy will not. Calamagratus, that word. Here, let me show it to you again. Because <laughs> I don't know if I want to say it. This one needs light to germinate, so I'm just going to do that and we're, and we're done. Label, close it, repeat. Next one, Black Eyed Susan. Old standby around here. A native, happy, lovely little flower. Again, this one I am hoping to have a strong presence down in the prairie garden, but I do use this one elsewhere in my garden. This one is actually a container variety, so it is not going to be the best for cut flowers. I have some annual varieties to start sometime soon for my cut flower garden. These guys are more the, the species variety. They are relatively short, but they will self seed and spread and be just delightful. Rude, Beckia. So rude. Let's do the money plant in this. Another new one. I'm trying all sorts of new ones. You guys are along for this ride, aren't you? Experiment with me. Excuse me. Money plant. I believe in the UK, a lot of people call this honesty, but it is Lunaria annua. It is lovely. It is lovely, but can be a bit of a thug. So I'm, I'm a little concerned. I am going to actually put him in my shade garden. He tolerates a lot of shade apparently and put him in an area where if he does spread about kind of vigorously, it's cool. This guy, one, I, I'm looking forward to having his greenness in my shade garden, but also those seed pods, which of course I'm going to try and find a picture of, of all these things. Um, these seed pods are mwah, in dried arrangements and wreaths. So that's his role in my garden. All right, that's this tray done. Let's see, what have I got? Ooh, prima donna white echinacea. La -da. I have done other echinaceas. I've done the species echinacea, the purpura, pupura. How do you pronounce that purpura? Echinacea. I have done other echinaceas this method, using this method, and they work beautifully. They also actually are relatively easy to start in seed cells. But this one, the prima donna white, I have not. This is another one that's destined for the, destined for the prairie garden. So I'm going to start just a few in here and then I will start the rest of those in cells. Set him aside. Label the things. Blue glow. Globe thistle. Hey, it's another new one. Hey guys. Hey, this one I received. Um, here's a picture. Cool. I received a bunch of dried flowers, a little bouquet of dried flowers last fall from my boss. And this was in it. And I love these little things. And then upon further research, I find out that they're in fact a perennial and they're just the sweetest looking flowers in the landscape. These I'm also going to put in the prairie garden. This one is one that light age germination. You label, close them up. Four more guys, we can do it. This one is a yarrow mix. I grew yarrow for the first time last year. Here's a picture. And was like, oh, okay, I kinda, I kinda get it. And then as the season progressed and as I started using it more in bouquets and as I noticed how friggin' beautiful it is in the landscape, I was like, yes. I need more yarrow. And then y'all then dry season came around and um, I realized how beautifully it dries. And I think it's just a winner. It is also native. And anytime you can get natives, that's better, of course. It is one of those plants, as you saw from the picture, that has those, those umbrella shaped flowers that so many pollinators 
I always think of them as like landing pads for butterflies and bees. They, they like them a lot. In fact, as I sit here and sing the praises of yarrow, I will tell you, my next one is also yarrow. I got this yarrow mix that's just sort of a species mix from Hudson Valley, but I also got the Colorado mix from Johnny's. The flowers and the, or the, mm, the colors in this mix are perfection. You have, they're like muted pastels, not sugary sweet pastels, but sort of antique pastels. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going to do that one as well. Real quick. <laughs> Hi. I'm going to interrupt to tell you guys that Yarrow also does beautifully in seed box and in cell trays. So I will save some of these. I have another packet. Don't worry. I will save some of these to start in soil blocks. All right. Next up. Asclepius. This one is um, Asclepius carasavica. Sure. It's not Asclepius tuberoso, which is the classic butterfly weed, but this is an Asclepius. Asclepius, by the way, like some people call it butterfly weed. Some people call it milkweed because it does get that milky sap. And finally, guys, we get to the last one of these. Um, purple cone flower. These are actually seeds from last year. This is the classic purple cone flower. Again, going to put a lot of it in my prairie garden, but I'm very happy to have this anywhere in my garden because it is a native. This is also a lovely herb. I'm sure you have heard of echinacea. <laughs> All right, friends. I think that's it for this afternoon. I actually did not get as far as I wanted to, probably because I was running off at the head to the camera for too long. <laughs> but I will be starting seeds in cells and doing some cell blocking in the next couple days. And I will record that as well. I will also, before I wrap up this video completely, I will show you what these look like, where I stick them out in the garden. Again, I'm going to let them hang out in the greenhouse overnight in these trays of water so that that seed starting mix really soaks in that moisture and gets good and moist. I hope that doesn't trigger people. Moist. And then I'm going to stick these out in the garden and we will see. I will bring you guys along for the journey when I un unbox them. I'll show you what they look like out there and then I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining me at the Lloyd's Den. Bye guys. Think about what you want to say next. Where are they, Becky?